We are going live. We're going to have a live class. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the lobby of the firehouse. We're going to get started real soon. In the meantime, while I'm getting the class situated, go ahead and watch some of the videos that are happening right here. And we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah. How's everybody else doing today? Some of these videos we talked about yesterday, or not yesterday, last week, and we're gonna be talking about the second half of these videos. Can't wait to share a little bit more. What's up, Richard Moss? K Y meow 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 meow. How you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Yeah yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get the class situated real quick. Make sure you guys sign in by clicking that like button right there. Click that like button. Click it, click it, click it, click it. We'll get started in a couple minutes. Taco Tuesday. And make your way into the lounge grab yourself some tacos and then make it to class we're just gonna have class today no real craziness in the lounge you guys are messing around a little too much put some holes in the walls you know what i mean i better see a hundred likes before that thing says zero Fuck. what's up omar how you doing nathaniel hello hello chief rocka good to be back Ryan, what's up? David. Jazz cam. Oh, shucks. <laughs> you right? 35 likes, guys. Once you join in, click that like button. And if you have to leave, that's fine. Go ahead and take off. But make sure you click that like button to sign in and get credit for today's class. Angel IGR became a member right? already today. Damn, dude. Let's see if I can redo it for you. I want it to be on screen because you joined up right before class started. Fairden, how you doing, man? Hopefully you're doing good. I want you to take notice of this left turn signal here that I'm a from Milwaukee. How you doing, Paul? Light, meaning I did 50 likes. Come on, guys. We could do it. We could do it. There's 82 of you in here. If everyone just clicks that like button, I'm pretty sure we'll hit 100. For quite a while, actually. Got to sign in for today's class. We're doing something slightly different today. We're going to go over motorcycle crashes and close calls. And if we have some time, we're going to go over five motorcycle helmets that are under $25 that I think you guys would really like. If you want to take a look at those five helmets, they're in the description already. So we're going to talk about the HJC CL17, which is a standard, you know, the Bell SRT Vestige, a Biltwell Gringo, a Scorpion XOR 420, and a Bell Qualifier Deluxe yes. MIPS. And I'm just going to show you what I, what I look for in a helmet. That's pretty much what we're trying to do. <laughs> JB, you, you got to do it yourself. $250, not $25. That'd be crazy if there's some helmets for $25. I'd be buying all of them. Let's do it. Almost 100 likes. Let's get it going. It's got 49 seconds left. We're at 72 likes. Let's see if we can get 30 within the last 30 seconds, guys. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Charlie, how you liking the Scorpion 420? Let me know because I'll, I'll uh, mention that. We're probably going to go over... Maybe five to six crashes, jump into some motorcycle helmet stuff, and then go back into the crashes, and then go back into home helmet stuff. We're gonna keep going back and forth. James Peak, baby. Ooh, yeah. 
Hey, what's up, ZX10? Hey, James Peak, there you are, baby. Welcome to the crew. 79 likes. Oh, man, we're so close. We're so close. We're so close. David Holmes, I'm so glad that you're getting help from me. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? We're in the lobby right now. We're going to make our way into the classroom. There's me on Aaron's uh, motorcycle that he got. But uh, remember, guys, we're still doing the giveaway. We have that motorcycle gear giveaway. We're giving away uh, $800, right? $800 worth of RevZilla gift cards. Still got that going, so if you want to join that, please do so. But let's go ahead and make our way to the classroom. All right, let's go. Did I just hear something? Did I just hear something? Hey, Melody Center, welcome to the crew. You got a nice rookie mustache. <laughs> Let me go ahead and fix some of this stuff real quick while we're doing this. There we go. So that's out of the way. Quarantine beard is evolving. How's it looking? How's it? Look? I got a little. That's that's from the mask. I went and gave blood today. I went and gave blood today, so I had to wear a mask like for an hour straight. Got a little. Makes makes me look like I have a big chin. <laughs> What's up, Paul? How you doing? How you doing? I know. I need my hair up here. It's so weird. Paul with the $5 donation. Guys, I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be updating some of these things for 2021. I'm super excited for it. Thank you so much, Paul, with the super sticker. 93 likes. I don't think we've hit 100 likes like before the timer went away yet. I don't think we've ever done that. So we'll see what we can do with that. So today, guys, how you doing, Ross Wolf Rogues Armory? Today, we're going to be going over some more of these. We are only halfway through it. You can see the little bar right here. These were user-submitted videos for the class last week, but we never got through them all. There are so many of them. So we're going to go over the rest of them today, hopefully, maybe halfway through. But I also have, before we really jump into it, whoa, there you go. So I also have some helmets that... I want you guys to check out. We're going to be going over five motorcycle helmets under 25 or $25. Five, let's start that again. Five motorcycle helmets under $250 you can get right now. So I might have said $25 during the intro, but $250 you can get right now. This is one of them. And I'm going to go over some of the things, but the main things that I look for when I'm looking for helmets is what's the rating? You know, first and foremost, I'm always going to get a full face helmet. So that's guaranteed. I'm not getting three-quarter half helmet, none of that stuff. I will get a modular helmet someday, but not right now. I don't need it. So I'm looking for the rating. Does it have a pin lock or any other anti-fog properties to it? And if not, I'll go ahead and, you know, get some Rain-X or some anti-fog spray. Hopefully it doesn't deteriorate the plastic, but we can talk more about that later. And then what is the cost of replacement visors? You notice over on the far right... It says the HJC HJ09 Pinlock Ready Face Shield. It's only the max is like 50 bucks. That's actually pretty good because I also get a visor with it. I always get, because if it comes with a clear visor, I always get a tinted visor. So I want to go ahead and go over that kind of stuff with you guys. Let me know if that's something that you like and you want me to say more and do more of it. Let's go ahead and put you down there. Let's go ahead and put you back up here. Boom, boom. And I have to say thank you to Fosos29 for the super sticker. Dante, how you doing? Long time. Yeah. How you been doing, man? You just bought the chrome visor. Diamond Crooks, how do you like it? But yeah, we're going to be going over some of those things. And it is not sponsored by RevZilla, but I do have RevZilla affiliate links with it. It's all linked in the description. So if you just want to check them out before you know, we get to it, please do so. But they didn't ask me to do any sponsored deals or nothing. I just I absolutely love the RevZilla website and all the information they give for you to be a consumer. So the reason why I kind of thought of it is because I went riding this last week. And who here in the chat, in the comments, wherever, did you guys go riding this weekend? I went riding this weekend and did some parking lot practice. And I looked down at my boots and I'm starting to see some, you know, threads ripping. Uh, I want to get like a new jacket. I love my pants. They're still in good condition. My, my gloves are still new. My helmet's still really good, but I'm also kind of looking into maybe getting a modular helmet so when I do some trainings, I can pop it up. So I'm like, well, what do I look for when I go buy some stuff? You know, I don't want to buy crazy things and just be like, okay, that's it. No, I actually spend way too much time 
trying to figure out what it is I need to get. So I'm like, yeah, might as well share the experience and share my thought process with you guys. Let me know if that's something you guys like. 105 likes. Ooh, yeah. Still cold. Oh, man. Fat boy, not road glide. Yeah, I'm good, Dante. I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yeah, Auto Carl. Not too many modular with good certification. So that's another thing that I look for is, you know, they're not going to be certified with, with Snell. And that's one of those things, guys. They don't certify modular helmets. They don't, they don't do that. So uh, I always look for the ECE. And then on top of that, I look for a reputable company that does it. Too much snow, Fosos. The wifey said no. <laughs> Too cold for a half helmet. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that wind. Whew. That's another reason why I like having full face because it keeps the elements out, which also includes rocks, bugs. You know, even if you never crash with a, with a half helmet, you're still getting all that stuff that could contribute to a ca crash. That's why I don't like wearing anything other than a full face. Just got back from parking lot. San Francisco traffic is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, you guys ready? We, get, we hit 100 likes. Make sure, you guys, if you want to join the crew and have that sweet mustache like Rogue's Armory, the pink beard like Richard Moss and Fosos, if you want any of that stuff and the emojis, make sure you click that join button. 199 helps out the channel quite a bit. So we're going to get into some crashes. Remember, we're going to go over a few of them, and then we're going to go into a motorcycle helmet, then we're going to get back into crashes, go into a motorcycle helmet, get back into crashes. You know, stuff like that. We're going to be relaxed, you know, nice and relaxed. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, oh, I got to get my pen out. Sorry, 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 sorry. I got to get my pen out. Let's see, where you at? Where you at? Make sure I get my pen. Come on now. There we go. Do I have my pen? Oh, yeah, there's the pen. You guys like the pen? Let me know. It's, it's fun with the pen. Sometimes it could be a pain in the ass. There, there we go. Here we go. What's up, Ram X-Ram? How you doing, man? All right, so we're going to be watching this. There's a side of the vehicle right there. Watch out for this side of the vehicle. Good swerve and braking to buy yourself some time. Good job, Doom Slice 96. Remember, these were all sent in to me by you guys. So if you want to submit your own videos, please do so. Let's get back. We, we covered this one last time. All right, so right here, what we're doing is we're just, we're obviously just riding. Now we're getting in towards an intersection way up here. So that's going to make you go into orange stage. If you don't remember what orange stage is, guys, come on now, look at the walls. We're going to go ahead and talk about that more on motorcycle training concepts pretty soon. But here's the thing. We're, we're traveling. We have good positioning. We're in the middle of the lane. That means we can escape left or right. We got a nice bike lane to the right. We can escape into the middle, you know, turn area right here if we had to. But it's an intersection. So we're going to be very uh, aware that there's an issue. Now, that right there is going to let you know. Let's go ahead and get me a little bit bigger. That right there is going to let you know there's a possible uh, path of travel violation with any vehicles, okay? It's pretty simple. You, know, you understand all that stuff. But here's the thing. It took your line of sight away. So right now, you can't see past that vehicle. So since you can't see past that vehicle, let's go ahead and roll off the throttle until we can see past that vehicle, and then we can accelerate a little bit more, okay? So don't just go because you assume it's clear, okay? So it's like a blind turn, because now we have this dumb dumb, and I'm going to say dumb dumb. It's fun to say that sometimes, but we have this person going because their path of travel, I'm sorry, not their path of travel, their line of sight was also blocked, which means that they didn't see us. Now, that can be an issue because, well, they're going to pull out in front of us if they don't see us on top of the inattentional blindness, motion-induced blindness, all those things. We don't know why it didn't see us, but I'm assuming this is why. So if my line of sight is blocked, I'm assuming other people's are blocked for me. So I'm going to go ahead and be prepared for this. So right here, boom, good, look at it, right away. He's going to go ahead and get the clutch in, and he's reaching for this, his right hand for the front brake. Now that's going to slow him down. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop in time, but here's the thing. You still want to slow down because that's going to buy you some options. It's going to increase the amount of time you're going to get closer to them because you're slowing down. That's going to allow you to make different choices later on. So here, here he is. He's going to be applying the horn. It's not going to help too much because you definitely don't want them to stop right now. So they're going to keep going. Now, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We're kind of blocked off to the right. We have good to the left. Hopefully, we can slow down and stop. And then right here, okay, he found the escape path. He found a route. He's going to take it. So great job, Doom Slice. This is all you could really do. Thankfully, you got yourself out of that situation. 
You never went into brown stage. You made sure you stayed in red stage during this red stage maneuver so you're navigating the threat. And you knew ahead of time that you could have used that shoulder, so good job on that. And he got around it. See how crazy and quick that could be? So what you really need to do is that when you get into this situation, you want to be already prepped for things like this. You want to be prepped for it. So when you see an intersection or you see anybody pull in front of you like that, okay, boom. We're not just leisurely riding anymore. Right now, we're just kind of, uh-oh, something is happening. Go into orange stage, roll the throttle, kind of wait a little bit, see what's happening. And then when you see this, definitely, okay, how good is your braking skills? How good is your swerving skills? Make sure you practice those things so you know what you are able to do and what your bike's able to do. Slow down enough to buy him that opportunity to swerve out of the way. So don't think you have to stop or you have to swerve. You can do both. Okay, moving on, moving on. Great swerve, Doom Slice. You saved yourself. Ooh, check your pantalones. All right, so this is sent in by Firefly. So this person came up really close, and I'm going to fast forward it real quick. And I don't have that big of an issue when somebody does this. Let me go ahead and pause it right there. I don't have the biggest issues because then I'm almost in a lane filtering position. So if anybody from back here decided, well, I guess from, how do I do it? I don't know. So anybody behind me, if they accidentally not pay attention and slam into the people, they're going to slam into that big truck or slam into this car right here. So I'm not too concerned by it. The only concern I have on this situation is if a cop pulls me over and says, why did I do that? Assuming I was lane filtering. I'd let them know, show them the GoPro, all those things, not an issue. Now here, I don't want you guys getting pissed. Okay, so just think of it in the perspective of they're protecting me almost. But it can be very frustrating. So there's no audio on this one. So why do you think that person crept up? Well, coming up a little bit sooner, there's that right turn lane. They kind of thought they could make it, but they didn't. It's, it's really not a non-issue at this point. So I don't want you guys getting upset, okay? So you saw the person creep up. They didn't haul ass and then stop. They just crept up, took part of your spot, wave at them, say, hey, don't do that again, but it's okay. All right, here we go. Jamie L. So right turn lane. Now look at open area big long line your line of sight is blocked for the intersection going left you have right turn only you see pedestrians over there assume, there it is oh damn so just take a quick look at this it's a red light for us so that means it's green light for them you see all the pedestrians in the crosswalk across the way on bikes Assume that they're going to be on your side also. So let's go back just a little bit more. That was a very close one for, for many reasons. Now, right here, I want you to pay attention to this. I'm always worried in this situation if any of these cars decide, you know what? Maybe I wasn't supposed to go straight right here. I'm going to turn right. And that's my biggest concern with this big, long line. And mine is open. So I'm always, I'm just kind of creeping in. Okay, so I'm on orange stage big time. And I'm waiting for any of these vehicles to start creeping into my lane. So I'm already in orange stage, so I'm prepped and ready. I'm getting closer and closer. And about this point, I'm like, I'm pretty, okay, nobody's going to come into my lane. When I see these people in the crosswalk, I'm always, 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 always going to assume there's going to be people in my crosswalk too. Okay? Now, the reason why we can't see the people in our crosswalk is this line of sight issue. Okay, line of sight, it gets so many people. It could get cars to not see you or it gets you to not see other things. So it's very important that if your line of sight, if your field of view gets shortened to where you can only see in front of you, not to the sides, you need to be in orange stage. You need to. So we're going to get to this point right here. And this is attached to the motorcycle. So it's not attached to his head. So we don't know which direction he's looking or uh, she, I don't know. The thing is, we need to be looking left, and if we see anybody right here, you need to not go. Just wait. It's not worth it. Just wait, because you also have a lot of vehicles. Now, why is there no vehicles in the intersection right now? Possibly just turn green for them, so now they're just taking off, and we're in that mindset of, oh, I could beat them. I could beat them. I could beat them. Never, 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 never. That's going to get you hurt. You might have done it 100 times, but that 101st time, somebody's going to hit you. So always, always, always. Maintain good habits and just stop right here. So right here, this person's going, boom, just stop. You're going slow enough, you could stop. But we don't. 
So we're like, I'm just going to go. This right here could have been you getting T-boned and whose fault would have been at that point. Now, are you rushing to get to work? Are you rushing to go somewhere else? Are you just impatient or you just didn't know about it? Or if this is just how you've always done things? That's what I want you to change. If you've always been doing this stuff and you're not meaning to be mean or egotistical, it's just this is what you know, that's fine. Let's change it. But if this is an ego thing, remove the ego because you know better. If you don't know better, well, hopefully now you do. That's all I care about. All right, so very, very, very scary on that one. All right, guys, don't do that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a couple more. And then we're going to get into the motorcycle helmets. Okay, we're going to go and talk about just one helmet that's under $250 that you can get right now that's really good. Okay, so Boris the Blade going through the mountains right here. Turkey, turkey, turkey. <laughs> uh, a little turkey. Okay, so right here we're going through the mountains. We're doing good speed, okay? Really good speed. And you see wildlife on the sides. Okay, you see some here. You see one right here. Now, when you see any wildlife on a side, or kids, treat kids just like that. They're unpredictable. They're kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that. Uh, they, they will go across in front of you when they're not supposed to. So hitting a kid is obviously very bad. Uh, hitting an animal, um, it's, it's kind of just as bad, I guess. But the thing is, you could easily crash right afterwards, and that's really bad. So we don't want to do that, okay? So we're going to go forward here. So as soon as you see this, go ahead and roll up the throttle a little bit. Now, the cool thing is he's only going 32, okay? 32, he's do doing a decent speed. He's not hauling ass around here. And what he can do is easily straighten up the motorcycle and apply a little bit of brakes and kind of cruise by and then get going. You don't want to be hauling ass. So that's why I really like Boris the Blade on this one. See how I was able to straighten it up, apply some brake pressure, and then get going? Very good. Now, right here, this is what I use my phone for, GPS. Okay, this is what I use it for. I don't use it for anything else. I, it allows me to see. This is what I absolutely love. This is what I wanted to bring in here. It lets me see when there's turns coming up ahead. And then look at this turn right here. And look at this crazy turn right there. That right there is why I have my phone on my handlebars. Is so I'm prepared for crazy turns coming up ahead. And if you want to, grab yourself a rock form mount. We have the link in the description. If you click it, it automatically applies a discount of 25%. So you should be good with that. Okay, I use it for my phone all the time, but this right here is exactly what I use it for. Great job, Boris, with the braking, not speeding, kept himself safe. All right. I was. Oh. So on this one, I'm going to let JG Capers take control. It's your job right now. Go ahead. We're going to go ahead and make him a uh, guest speaker because he did a great job. All right, here we go. Let me get a boop. There we go riding and a driver came over to lanes into my own and I had to very quickly figure out what to do in order to not get hit. I wanted to take a moment with that in mind and thank the YouTuber who I prescribe to when it comes to identifying potential threats and that's Dan Dan the Fireman. He teaches an awesome acronym called PLAN. You are positioning yourself, you are locating hazards when you're riding, you're adapting to those hazards, and then you're navigating around them if you absolutely need to. In this case, said hazard was that driver who came over into my lane. I saw him coming from a mile away because I was positioned for it in the center of the lane and ready for people to filter over into my own. I sped up a little bit so he would see me, used the horn when he came over even further, rolled off of the throttle, hit the brakes, and got out of his way. If I had accelerated while laying on the horn, the driver in front of me could have noticed, gotten the jitters, and slammed on the brakes, and I could have run into him. Or, if I had gone over to the left into the shoulder, it's very tight over there, and I could have hit debris or been smeared against it by this driver. I feel like in this situation, it didn't seem like a big deal because I've been practicing so much that I was just doing my own thing and making sure that I was safe when I was riding, and that's what we all should be doing. It is a lot of fun, and you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble, just a little bit, but what's most important is that we're being safe at the end of the day, too. So, I hope you all enjoy. I saw him.
He didn't see me though. All right. So what do you guys think about that one? So thank you, JG Capers, for giving your own after action review. If you guys have your own videos of close calls and you make it into an after action review and you submit it, there's a good chance I'll just do that for you. And I'm just going to go ahead and mention real quick a few things here. So he's riding, he's riding. He sees somebody cross into his lane perfectly fine. You know, that's normal traffic. But then you see this right here. So somebody else is starting to come into here. And everyone's merging from the right lanes to go to the, the, the left lane, which is more fast. And we're doing decent speed here. So we're kind of in this, this orange stage, yellowish stage area. And as soon as we see this, we're getting closer and closer to his blind spot. So what I see with JG Capers is braking, releasing, braking, releasing, kind of getting himself like, okay, what is this person doing? I can't speed up because then I'll be too close to that vehicle. I can't slow down too much. I, you know, I'm in this weird spot. And that's perfectly fine. Keep doing that if you have to. And it's not a big deal. So right now, if he just sped up to get out of this person's blind spot, he's going to be right on this person. So he needs to stay here, even though... You know, he wants to get a little bit further. So it's perfectly fine. So braking, swir or, uh, braking, acceleration, braking, acceleration. And now we're definitely in the br uh, blind spot. So he's really concerned. What do I do? What do I do? In this situation, really just keep yourself staggered. Don't get in the blind spot. As soon as you see this person give you enough space up ahead, you kind of do this mental calculation. If I, you know, scoot up there, I'll be fine. Then go ahead and do that. But right now, there's not enough room. So if you scoot it up right here, you're still really close to that vehicle. So don't get too crazy. As soon as he sees this, brake and horn. That's perfectly fine. He's doing the brake. That's what I care about. He's going to decelerate, get himself out of there. Because he can't really do much there. If he speeds up, he's going to hit the back of that vehicle. Did a great job. Did a great job. Now we're moving out of the danger zone and get going. So that's all I, I care about, him. guys. That's all I care about. He didn't see me, though. All right, so we're gonna be moving with this one with Wesley. Oh, debris in the road. So watch out, one piece is usually gonna turn to multiple pieces. There they go. So I wanna point out, this, all these videos are really short. So we're gonna get up into this point. So we're looking forward. We maybe see an S, uh, a semi way ahead. And all of a sudden you start seeing brake lights. So, you know, why is this brake light here? You see a little bit of the weird stuff, uncommon things in a common situation when it came to anything on the road. So you're not just looking for vehicles, you're looking for road surface hazards, potholes, alligator skin, you know, the, the tire tread and everything, animals, anything on the surface, okay? So we need to look at that. So he sees it, he's gonna stay in his lane. Now you can go crazy and swerve multiple lanes if you want, but that's gonna be even more dangerous for you. So he stayed in his lane, just moved from one position to the next. That sounds an awful lot like plan. So position yourself for safety, Locate this hazard, you know, any hazard, adapt to it. So what he did is just adapted to it. He didn't swerve. He just switched from lane position one to lane position two or three. And that's it. Now, if there's ever an issue where somebody comes in front of you and they take away your whole lane, you have to navigate that threat. A lot of path of travel, a lot of people merging when they're not supposed to. But right here, all he did was just adapt to it. So it's a non-issue at this point. Now he sees a bunch and he did a head check. He checked his mirrors. So he's getting ready to switch other lanes. He's indicating. Great job. You see there's some people here, but it looks like he's able to do it safely. Look at all that debris, all that alligator skin right there. All that stuff is going to really mess up your tires. There's a lot of, you know, was it the, the metal in there? You know, I don't, know, I don't know how tires are constructed, but they have metal in it, and it could easily puncture your tire or flip up and hit you. But real quick, look at way over here. It's probably coming from that, that vehicle right there. You see all these brake lights? That vehicle probably just punctured a tire. Started spinning it out everywhere. So if you see an S, uh, not SUV, a semi starting to go towards the road and a lot of brake lights up ahead, probably blew a tire. But he was able to get out of there. But navigated at this point a threat, and he's going to get back into his lane. So he did a great job. Did a great job. Good job, Wesley. All right, before we get into Dexy, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the first helmet that we're going to talk about. Now, the first helmet that we're going to talk about is going to be the HJC CL17. Now, this right here, really like this helmet. So this helmet, this is what we're going to do, guys. We're going to talk about five motorcycle helmets under $250 that you can get right now, okay? And that's really important because, you know, if you guys are looking for helmets right now, this is what you should be doing. Now, this is on Revzilla. Links are in the description right now. So if you want to check them out and see what number two, three, four, and five is, please do so. But the HJC CL17. Now, the reason why 
I picked this helmet is because I, I look for ratings. I look to see if it has a pin lock. And then I look to see what the cost of replacement visors are. That's my biggest thing, okay? So I'm looking for a helmet right now. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to start looking through the list of things. First, I'm going to pick the budget that I have. It's like all I have is 250 bucks. Okay, cool. I need to get something under 250 because, you know, shipping and, and all those other things. So right here, what you can see is it's about, you know, it's, it's on sale right now, but it's usually 150 bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my size. Oh, they're all out of stock, which is very embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you could definitely find some out there. So maybe this one's not a good one. Let's go ahead and go to the second one. How about that? <laughs> Starting over. There we go. So under 250 bucks. That's not what I want to do. There we go. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that one. So we're going to do four helmets under 250 bucks. I didn't realize it was out of stock. Maybe I should have checked that out. Changing that. Getting rid of that. The, if you can find the HJC CL17 anywhere, then please do so. It's a great helmet. Okay, so this is actually a good helmet. There we go. Thank you for live streams. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so what do I do? Let's go ahead and start that over. So four motorcycle helmets under $250 you can get right now. Okay, so what I do is I look at the rating. I look and see if there's any type of anti-fog technology or if there's a pin lock. And then I see what the cost of replacement visors are because visors are pretty expensive. What I do is if it comes with a clear visor, I get a, a, a shaded visor. If it comes with a shaded visor, I get a clear visor so I can change it all out. Okay, so I change everything out. The cool thing about this helmet, let's go ahead and make this full screen for you guys. The cool thing about this helmet is I actually have it. Okay, so this is going to be the bell bag that it comes with. Now. When I said I looked for the rating, okay, we're going to talk about that real quick. But one thing I always look for when I get a new helmet is I make sure it's full face. So I always get a full face helmet. So I actually got the helmet right here. It's a good helmet. I really like it. So now you know I I've actually have experience with it. So what do I do is when I'm looking for a new helmet, I, I want to get a full face because I don't want anything without the chin bar because if I hit myself, it's a no bueno situation, so I want to make sure I could do that. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and pick medium. So cool, I like the look of the helmet. You know, I'm going to go look around. Hey, it looks pretty cool. I like it, I like it, I like it. You know, it's a Bell, so it comes from, you know, Bell Helmets, very reputable company, uh, pretty cool. Oh, look, it's staff picked, so RevZilla even thinks it's a good helmet. Okay, so far, I'm pretty good. $209.95 within my budget. All right. The next thing I look for is right here, okay? What type of shape uh, head is this designed for? Now there's intermediate oval, round oval, long oval, three different kinds of heads. Now I have an intermediate oval. Most um, Americans, most people in the United States have intermediate oval. Uh, Japan's more of a round oval. Europeans are kind of long oval, but it all really depends on what your head shape is. So you always want to double check that. And if you ever have any issues out here on RevZilla, this is kind of how you can check. Okay, so. These are the types of hel or head shapes, so make sure you do that because you don't want to get a, uh, a long oval helmet for your round head, okay? Because you're going to have pressure on the sides of your crown. And then also, if you are um, a long oval or an intermediate oval, you don't want to get a round-shaped helmet because you're going to have a lot of pressure on the front of your head, and that's not good. It's going to give you a lot of headaches when you're riding. So if you get headaches right now while you're riding, especially right here, like you get a lot of pain, you probably have the wrong shaped helmet, okay? So as soon as I look at this, I go down here. Okay, cool. Intermediate oval that fits my head. So that's something I can work with. I start to read all these things, and a lot of this is just marketing, okay? So I don't really care too much. What I care more about is this stuff right here. I look for the rating. Is it DOT? Is it ECE? Is it Snell? Those are the things I look for. So DOT, not too impressed by DOT. It's an It's a after market, um, not after, it's post market testing so that they, they can, the, the manufacturer can put the helmet on the market and then maybe it gets tested if it follows the standards. ECE, before it even goes on the market, has to be tested. Snell is, is a post market sometimes. Um, Snell is an independent third party that tests things. So ECE is really good. Now, there's a new helmet uh, standard called FIM. 
It's a it's the new MotoGP stuff, and that's actually going to be really good. So I'm looking out for that too. But when I see this, if it just said DOT, I'd be a little concerned. But it says Snell M2015. What does that mean? Uh, it is the 2015 rating, and they usually have new ratings every five years. So it's not the 2020 rating, but it's still pretty dang good, at least the 2015. So I'm pretty happy with that. Three shell sizes. What does that mean? So the three shell sizes. What that means is that this right here is, I believe, I believe I got a medium. So what this means right here, let's go ahead and get me some, my little bit bigger right here. We're going to go back to the crashes soon. What this means is that this, the size of the helmet itself is the shell size. So a medium large is going to be bigger than an extra small small. And then a an XL to 3XL is going to be even bigger. So the shape of the head, if you want to have a bobble head or not type of thing. So I like to look at I like to look at the shell sizes because I don't want it to be only one shell size for every range because what they're doing then at that point is just getting huge cheek pads, and I don't like that. So I really like the fact that it has three shell sizes, three EPS sizes. That's the polystyrene foam on the inside. So that's really good. Panovision Shield. Now that sounds an awful lot like marketing, but... When I've actually tested out, it means you have really good uh, peripheral vision, so it's really good on that. Eyewear compatible. So if you are having to deal with eyewear, it's very important to, to look and see if a lot of these things are. Now, a lot of helmets nowadays are eyewear compatible. What that means is that there's little slits in the foam where your eyeglasses can go into so they're not getting pushed into the side of your head. So that can cause headaches. Okay. Five-year warranty. That's typical. Now, you want to replace your helmet every five years anyways, so uh, check the warranty on that. Chin curtains are really good to prevent airflow getting up top. Double D-ring closure, that's the, that's the typical retention system that they have, you know, for, for motorcycle helmets. It's that D-ring, okay? So some of them are ratchet, some of them are magnetic. Okay, so, so far, pretty good. You know, I like it. It's within my budget. It's Snell rated. It's fitting my head shape um it does have where it does it doesn't say anything about a pin lock system so the pin lock is is like a double pane window that's going to help from fogging so that's one of my big issues on this one's because i don't want it to fog up so i would have to go ahead and buy aftermarket cleansers or anti-fog spray okay so uh it's not very good but here's the cool thing so let's go ahead and take a look at this and let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is the face shield replacement. So I always look at that because I always buy an extra face shield just in case. And I want to know how much it's going to cost, the added cost to it. So light smoke, dark smoke, you have all these cool things in here. So typically, anything for nighttime, you want clear or, I don't know about, no, not gold iridium. iridium. You want yellow. It looks like they don't have yellow. So anything at nighttime, you want clear. Anything with, with low light, you don't want any of these other things. These other things, maybe even maybe the blue would work. But these other things will re reduce some of your vision. So be very careful with that. But it's $59.95 for a clear visor. Not too bad, not too bad. But here's the cool thing with this one. Pinlock ready face shield for an extra 30 bucks. Oh, that's pretty cool. So they do have pinlock vision stuff for it. So it's really cool to see. But that think about that as the extra cost that you're going to have. Okay, so the helmet's going to be $209.95 with another $60. So $270. But that's if you want to have an extra face shield, okay? So just be aware of that. And I just wanted to bring up some of those things with this uh, helmet. Uh, the HJC CL17 is not in stock, so I don't feel comfortable telling you guys to get that. But that right there is one of the helmets that I would get, and I actually do have it. So it's my backup helmet. And we're going to go over the Biltwell Gringo later. We're going to go over the Scorpion XO and then the Belt Qualifier a little bit later. But let's get back into this, okay? Let's get back into this. Uh, as soon as I can answer some of these questions, let's see. It doesn't fog up too badly for you. Good, good, good. Um, let's see. My visor has light scratches and sun is bouncing off them. Is there any way to fix that? Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know near future. There could possibly be some uh, cleansers that will fill in the cracks a little bit. Uh, what do I think? Okay, so let's see. I saw something about iridium. Oh, has Dan ever stated his opinions on iridium visors? Well, Kagi, um, I have an iridium, uh, silver iridium visor on my 
my showy, and I love it. Uh, I don't see any real difference. It's more like sunglasses versus just having dark tint. So you still don't want to wear that at night. It's still going to block quite a bit. All right, guys. All right, let's get back into this. Let me know if you like uh, me going over some of these things. I might go over some boots, gloves, jackets, pants, maybe some extra parts. Let me know, okay? Let's go back to this. All right, so we're lane filtering. Oh, that's one of the issues with lane filtering. Good swerve out of the way. Watch out for the person in front of you. Now we're getting back into a good line of sight and positioning. Good, 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 good. All right. And if, uh, if you want me to go over how to clean a helmet and stuff, we can do that on the Motorcycle Training Concepts channel. We're going to have more stuff coming up on there. Trust me, guys. We're going to have some really cool things. I did a lot of training uh, this weekend that we're going to talk about. But anyways, right here, what we're going to be talking about is this from Dexy. He's going to be going forward, uh, lane filtering. Just take a quick look at the line of sight we have. Very good line of sight. We can see very well. That's really important. If we're not lane filtering, look at the position he's in. He's almost on the line. So let's say if this person right here slammed the brakes, what do we do? We just go straight. So that's really cool to see. Uh, right here, we're going to be moving forward, though. As soon as you see that, uh-oh, no bueno. Where are we going to go, though? We're stuck right here. We, don't, we can't go left right now. We can't go right right now. What do we do? We can also decelerate, okay? Remember, escape pass isn't always left or right. It's either going forward and backwards, too. So what we can do is, is decelerate and kind of get back where we were or get into this position right here. As soon as we saw that, we're applying the brakes. Now we're hoping the person behind us is applying the brakes, too. It's not a good situation to be in. So while we were lane filtering, we saw something happen like this. Let's go ahead and just decelerate right now. Okay, it's going to help us so that we don't have to navigate a threat. Remember, we're still trying to locate and adapt to hazards. And if we can do that instead of navigating threats, which is a red stage maneuver, we want to stay in yellow and orange stage as much as we possibly can. Let's go ahead and decelerate right now. Okay. But he did a great job right here. He recognized the hazard. And right now, what you can do is accelerate and then swerve a little bit into the lane position one, get yourself out of there, which is what he does. Now we're going to get back into position because right here, let's go ahead and go back a little bit more. Right here, I don't like it because if this person decides to slam the brakes like this person's applying the brakes, we don't have a good space cushion and we have terrible line of sight. So you either stay right here in lane position one or you do what he's about to do and get into lane position three and we're kind of resetting. Okay, so we reset, non-issue. He didn't get pissed off, look back and start punching mirrors. No one did nothing. Make sure we say ourselves first. So good job, Dexy. And I'm assuming his mirrors are up like that because he lane filters all the time. But here's the thing. If you have to have your uh, mirrors up like that to lane filter, it means you're cutting it really close. Okay? So think about that. All right. So I left a lot of this in. He's following directions. He was supposed to turn there. So this happens quite a bit. I fast forwarded this part. Now we're going to turn left instead. Is this a good lane position for that turn? Eh, you can make it happen which he does so he looks back looks back not paying attention to what's in front and there it is you good yeah <sighs> all right so let's go back a little bit i just want to point out this right here so you're following directions on your phone and this is why i like having it on the handlebars but here's the thing you got to pay attention to it Okay, so you have to know that it's happening. You have to be paying attention. You can't just be talking to your friends the whole time and then kind of forget. Okay, so if something like this happens, you de definitely don't want to rush into that turn. You do exactly what they did, which was go past the turn. It's like, oops, supposed to go there. Go ahead and go past, past the turn and do a U-turn. That's perfectly fine. So now we're getting into here. We're going to take our turn. Now, this is why I always tell you guys to keep looking forward. Supposedly, what happened here with Isaac Blue is he was looking back, making sure his buddies were actually turning too. At this point, it's not your concern. Your, your concern is looking forward. If your concern is them, that's why we have mirrors, and that's why we have comm systems. So if you don't have a comm system, check out Cardo. They do sponsor the channel. The link that's in the chat and in the comments and in the description is going to be... Uh, the link for it. It's an affiliate link. You get a discount automatically. But I like to talk to my friends. Say, hey, made the turn. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? How you guys doing? And if they say I missed it, okay, I'll just pull over. I'm not using my vision 
to that's being taken away from the road. I'm not doing this the whole time. I'm just talking and I'm paying attention to what's important in front of me. So what happened here is that we're not paying attention. We look back, we look back, and we're traveling quite a bit. And as soon as we look up, look where we're aiming. We're aiming off road. That's not going to be good. Now we talked about that in last class where if you're if you're looking. Look where my arms go. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but when you turn your head, you turn your shoulders because everything's connected. Okay, you sternocleomastoid, you got your trapezius, you got your shoulder girdle and everything situated. As soon as you turn, you're going to turn your upper body. Okay, so that's why you always work on looking where you want to go because that's going to help you. It's going to help you when you look where you want to go. It's going to help move that upper body a little bit. Okay, that's why I have people exaggerate quite a bit because it's going to. I tell them to put their, their, their chin on their shoulder. They never get to that point. They try, and they just keep doing this. I'm going to keep trying to get that chin. I'm trying. I'm trying to get that chin on my shoulder, and they just keep turning. And that's what I want them to do on a U-turn, right? So really important. But that's what's happening here. We're going a little off-road here now. You can panic, or you can say, oh, okay, move it to the other side. Move my chin to the other side. And this is also why we have full gear. That's why we're going over motorcycle helmets too right now. Whoa! Holy shit! So right here, there's the loss of traction to the front. And thankfully, he didn't get hurt. But this is a great vision uh, video. <laughs> video. This is a great video that talks about vision because it's a good example of what happens when you don't pay attention to what's in front and then what happens when you move your head around. Okay, so... I love that that uh, he sent this in so that we can learn about it. You good? Yeah. So they do have a comm system, so utilize it. Utilize it a little bit more. Uh. Or hey, Moya. All right, good head check. Good double checked, even better. It's all clear for him. Oh, whoa. Check your pantalones. Got a little cock on your pantalones. Um. Let's go back a little more. So we're coming up to an intersection, orange stage. He's rolling off the throttle, doing great with the speed. We have a very expensive, amazing bike lately. We dropped down to 30 from 36. Uh, very, very good bike, a BMW. So what he said in this was that his traction control really kicked in. So if you have traction control, this could help you, okay? So we're moving. So he's looking left, doesn't see anybody, okay? Well, I got to pay attention in front of me to make sure there's no road hazards and nothing in front of me too. And then now that there's nothing, I look at left again. That's that ratcheting that I like you guys doing, okay? So I'm going to look left in my turn. I look over here, look in front of me. Look over here, look in front of me. Look over here, look in front of me. Look over here, in front of me. It's a ratchet, okay? I'm constantly ratcheting my vision because you only have a little bit of that focal vision. Everything else is peripheral. So I look, 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 go. That's what I do, and that's what I like that he's doing right here. Now take a look at this, the discoloration in the road. So think about environmental hazards. If it's really cold, where do you think ice forms? On bridges, on top of the bridges, for one. But then definitely when there's no sunlight, you're going to have a lot of ice on the ground too. So I have a feeling that's what it was, and I think he said it was ice. So be very careful with that, especially in the turn. You can handle it going straight for a little while, but watch out on those turns. And that's where it came. Look at that. How many times have you seen anybody crash when their bike looks like this so many times now he went up to 39 miles per hour not because uh he was gunning it it's because when he started falling down uh his wrist started doing that so it, it's the digital speedometer and everything so it thinks 39 whatever the thing is the traction control like in rain mode somebody was talking about rain mode it will reduce some of that input to regain some of that traction, because we talk about traction all the time on this channel. What are the three things that you, you need for traction? Or the three things that take away traction and then need traction? In order to go faster, acceleration, you need traction. In order to decelerate, which is braking or slowing down, engine braking, whatever, you need traction to do that. Turning, you need traction to do that. So right here, what the cool thing is about this uh, motorcycle and a lot of the new rider aids coming out is that, well, we can't change your turning. We can't change well, actually, yeah, that's it. We can't change your turning. We can only change your acceleration, deceleration. So the computer kicked in, and instead of saying, hey, give it more throttle, it said, nope, we're going to give it less. That way, we don't take away traction from that tire and give it as much as we possibly can so it can regain it. So it's really cool to see this in action. That's why I wanted to bring this up. 
and it straightened up. It grabbed traction and brought him back up with all the dryostropic forces and all the physics and all the sciences. It brought it back up. So this is why I really like Rider 8s. I really do. So when I look for new motorcycles now, if I can afford it, I'm going to get a motorcycle with a lot of Rider 8s. You know, uh, what was it? There's turning ABS, then there's regular ABS. There's turning traction control. There's regular traction control. There's wheelie mitigation. There's rain mode, sport mode, normal mode, custom modes. There's so many new things coming out. There's even smart cruise control now for motorcycles. I'm going to grab what I feel is important, okay? So we have a lot of gravel and dust and dirt on the roads here. So I want lean angle traction control. I want ABS, lean angle ABS. I want all these newfangled things to stay as safe as possible because if at any point he did this without the rider aids, it. do you think your training can kick in right here in a split second? I hope so. But what do you do with this? Roll off the throttle, pretty much. Are you going to be able to do that? I don't think so. Typically, this would have been a low side. Very low speed at this point and sliding across ice. Okay, hopefully he has full gear. But I want the rider aid. I don't want to rely on buying sliders and crash guards and, and new things for my bike when a rider, rider aid can prevent the crash in the first place. Amazing job right here. It's great. Whew. Popped himself back up. And that bike did its job. Think of a rider aid as literally a rider aid. It's keeping you safe. All right, so we're moving in here from Dio. Oh, shit, a There's a deer. deer. Hit a deer. See, we didn't want to hit a turkey earlier, but now we're going to hit a deer. Thankfully, he kept it up. That's what she said. Yeah. Oh, my God. What's one Damn. thing you think might have saved him on that? It's right there on the handlebars. The fucking deer. Right in the comments. My bike is fucked. I didn't go down, though. They have a comm system. Good. Yeah, dude. Yeah? I can't believe I hit a deer. Yo, my shit, my shit's fucked. It's spewing coolant. So, in that situation, here's the thing. Oh my God. You can't, do, you, you're not going to be able to do anything. You're not going to be able to do anything. Right here, you have no reaction. So he's like, oh crap, that's his perception. He's reacting vocally. We need to act with our hands, but really this is, oh, there's, not, there's nothing you can do. So I'm not going to be here and say you need to swerve, you need to brake. This is one of those freak accidents that you have no chance of really avoiding and it's pure luck at this point. Um, one thing that you hopefully have on your body is full gear, just in case something happens. And then hopefully your buddies have the medical training to rescue you and then have the first aid kits and everything that are, that are for you. So right here, there's nothing you could have done. Nothing you could have done. I'm just happy he was able to keep it up. I see some people saying some steering dampeners. Yeah, yeah. So that prevented a lot of this jostling. It kind of kept his hands uh, from yeah. moving crazy. Yeah. <sighs> the steering dampener right there. That does help. It does help. Oh deer jerky's God. good. Damn. I did. I hit the fucking deer. My bike is. I want to see Rick. See the red light? Was that on there before the crash? Was that red? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. I, I thought that was like a. Oh, shit. I thought something else was, was happening there. So. In this situation, you just hit a very heavy object with your bike. You're leaking coolant everywhere. It's obvious you can't ride it off after that. But if you weren't leaking coolant or anything like that, and you just had this fairing damage, check your frame, check your suspension, check your tire, check everything before thinking about taking off. If anything, at this point, just see if you can get it towed. Yeah, dude. Side of the deer. Yeah. I can't believe I hit a deer. Yo, my shit, my shit's fucked. It's spewing coolant. So it's spewing coolant. It could be oil. At this point, you're not riding that bike. Don't, don't chance it. Don't chance it. Just you and your friends pull some money together if you can't afford it or if you don't have that type of insurance that can take it. Pull it together. Get, uh, get it towed. End of story. Work on it later. Hopefully you have some good friends. All right, so we're going to look at Horatio. All right, watch out. Look forward, look forward. Come here, there. Sometimes we could think to dance, yeah. All right, so we talk about coolant. intersections all the time. So we're in the intersection, orange stage, guys. You should know that by now. Orange stage, orange stage, orange stage. And then also make sure 
if we pass one hazard, we did it good. Yeah, good job. Achievement unlocked, you know. Doesn't mean that there's not another. There could always be a secondary or a third or a fourth. And this is where you really have to pay attention. Now, it is the car's fault, uh, Joe Slow. It is the car's fault for pulling out in front of us, but it's our responsibility to make sure that we're as safe as possible. So don't go until you know it's okay to go. That's really the main thing. It's common sense, but the thing is we feel sometimes entitled to go because we're supposed to go, and these people should be paying attention. Ah, man, you know how many times I got myself in trouble by saying, well, they should know. I want that to be removed from all of your guys' vocabulary. Stop saying, well, you should have known by now. They should have known better. Wait, you should have done this. There is no you should have anymore. I want that out of your vocabulary because now you're putting all the responsibility on the other people. And I'm saying that because I used to say it all the time about my kids. I used to say it all the time about, 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 about Nikki. I used to say it about everybody. It's like, they should have done this. They should have done that. You should have done this. And at the end of the day, different life experiences say, you know, they might not know. They might not have ever been taught. They might not have ever understood the, the consequences of not knowing. So it's me that I should know better. I should know that some people just don't know. And if that's the case, then I need to teach. I need to educate. But how would I want to be educated? By being yelled at? No. I want to be taught respectfully. And that's very hard to do. It really is. So that's why I feel being a teacher and mentor is very good for your own learning. It's very good for your own personality and, and how to control your ego. Because when you become a mentor and a teacher, your ego's out. You, 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 you can't be like, you should know better by now. You can't do that. So you have to, have to, have to reduce that ego to become a better writer, become a better mentor, become a better teacher. You know, smart writer principles, teaching, mentoring. Sorry, a little soapbox right there. Uh, I didn't want to call you out or anything, Jim. Was it Jim that, I, that, I, that said that? Either way, either way, let's make sure we put ourselves in safety, be responsible for ourselves. And so what I'm going to do now is share, hey, you know, we saw one vehicle pull out in front. We get upset. Okay, just because one vehicle did doesn't mean another won't. Okay. Oh, that vehicle pulled out in front of me. I can't see the vehicle behind them. You can see the lights, though. Look at, see the, see the tires and the lights? They're all casting shadow. That means there's somebody behind them. If they went, hey, they might, somebody else might go. So this is where I go into orange stage. I'm really prepped and ready for anything. Because you know what they should know? But here's the thing, I should know better too. So when I see this, I'm going to slow down and I'm not going to look to the left and focus, I mean, sorry, look to the right and focus to the right. I'm concerned about this person now. I'm really concerned about this person. What, are they going to go or not? I don't know yet. I really don't know. Now that I do, I don't have enough time to react because I'm so focused on that person that just went by and they're like, you should know. Well, so should this person. But I should, I should know my escape routes. I should know how to, to swerve. I should know how to break. I should know what to look for. I should be paying attention. I should keep my ego in check. There's all these I should have done for myself. I can't control that person. Because here's the thing. I'm trying to teach this person and control what this person does. And they should know better. What about this car over there? What about that car? What about that car? What about that car? Are you going to be able to teach the whole world? Or can you just teach yourself? Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. He was able to slow down and stop in time to where it's not a bad injury or incident. Thing is, I don't want to even have this, okay? I just want to point out real quick, let's get to this point right here. I just want to point out right here though, okay guys? Pay attention, please, please, please. Focus on yourself. Don't worry about other people. We're here trying to be good riders, smart riders. And the only way that's going to happen is if we focus inward. Okay? I really want you to focus inward. I really want you to take this seriously. And this is why I do this. I'm very passionate about making sure you guys are safe. Because here's the thing. We hit that car. Okay? We hit that car. The car just has paint damage. That right there could be our left leg. And let's say we have to work. You know, we work with our legs. We have to walk everywhere. Now we have a limp and we're out of work. Now we're having to deal with stuff. We don't have that cage. We don't have that protection that these cars have. And I don't like seeing people hurt. I hate it. I hate it, hate it, hate it. 
it, it, it upsets me more than it probably should. But the thing is, that's why I do this. I want you guys to stay safe. I want you to have the tools to stay safe. And then at the same time, I work on the, it's not just the physical health, the mental health too. I don't want you guys to ride around angry. I don't want you guys being upset with everybody. I don't want you guys focused on the wrong things when we can just all be good community members, good citizens, good people, and really getting better benefits from that too. And there's that, there's the uh, aspect of it that you don't think about is, you know, if we're good riders and we show courtesy to other drivers, we could pass laws that aren't as restrictive on motorcycle riders. I think there's a lot of cool things that are happening here. I just want you guys to pay attention to what's important. All right, so we're moving here, Ryder Ryan. Intersection, orange stage, be prepped and ready. Side of the vehicle over, over here. Good braking, good job. Oh! Didn't see it at first. So we're coming up to the intersection. We're not paying attention, possibly. Maybe we're talking, having a great time with our buddy over there on the bottom right in our mirror. Maybe we weren't paying attention. Not a big deal. And he's like, I think I thought you were going to gun it or just go for it. Now, if that's the case, if your friend isn't paying attention and you're behind them and it's like, oh, we're kind of getting close, go ahead and mention it. Hey, uh, are, you, are we slowing down here or what? And then that's going to go ahead and bring them back into yellow stage. So what do you think, what stage do you think he was in? I think he was in white stage, a little bit zoned out. Not a big deal. He was able to stop in time. Good fundamental skills if your situational awareness fails a little bit. But if your friend goes or doesn't go, it doesn't mean you have to. So remember, ride your own ride. So it's very important you ride your own ride. So he's like, oh, crap, I got to stop. Could have dumped it. Didn't. So good progressive braking. Hey, just look at it and chalk it up to progressive braking practice. <laughs> see that right there is why i want a uh, modular helmet so if i'm ever teaching one of you guys i don't have to have the face shield on i can lift it up and yell at you <laughs> I was wondering if you're just gonna use it or not. andre how you doing i didn't see it at first hey everybody oh. um so some bad stuff okay so this one right here uh a little viewer discretion a little viewer discretion. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and watch this video. And then we're going to go over the other three helmets. And then we're going to go into a and a So it looks like we're getting close. This is towards the end. I, it's a longer video, but a uh, little viewer discretion because there is, this is a fatality. This is a fatality. So I just want you guys to understand that uh, a motorcycle rider did die in this. And I'm going to be letting Anthony talk throughout this whole thing. And I'm going to let him be the instructor part of this. He's mentoring all of us here. And just real quick, I, I do want to mention that he doesn't show quite a bit. He doesn't show a lot, but he, he's going to explain the, the mental trauma that he's going to have after witnessing something like this. And this is something that you could possibly have if you try to attempt to rescue another rider and things don't work out very well. So... I want you to know what you guys are getting into when you become smart riders or part of the crew if you want to help out other riders. And if you have your own trauma kit, just realize that you'll feel better, though, knowing that you tried your best and you had as much information as you possibly can. Okay, so I just want you guys to understand that. And real quick, howdy, rowdy. Thank you so much. Greetings from Switzerland. Please take a look at this one. Uh, send in a link in chat. Uh, send it to my Discord because I don't think you can send links in the chat. Uh, differently. Thank you so much for the 20. I appreciate it. Viewer discretion advised from Major Allwood. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go ahead and move off to the sides so that actually, you know, let's just go ahead and do this. Boop. And I'm going to let Anthony take over the class for a quick second. Okay. So once again, if you don't want to see it, please don't. Some bad stuff happened last weekend. Yeah, let's go ahead and make it start hey, all everybody. over. Um, so some bad stuff happened last weekend. There was a fatal motorcycle accident that I was sort of involved in. Um, let me answer a few questions. No, I didn't know the guy. No, I was not riding with him. I saw him at the gas station and I figured I'd catch up and say, hey, uh, I never made it up to him. So I'm gonna show you that clip uh, right now.
motherfucker. Hey, bro. Yo, call that one one. All right, as you can see, I cut a lot of the bad stuff out. That video is like 20 minutes long of uh, paramedics and stuff. Yes, the, the, the guy did pass away right there with me holding him. Um, condolences to his family. I found out who he was later that night. Um, I'm not going to say his name. So if you guys leave comments in there, make it respectful. Otherwise, it's going to be deleted. I'm posting this video as an awareness. Um, if you're in a vehicle, an 18-wheeler, it doesn't matter. Look out. Look at your surroundings. Be aware of it. Put your phone down. If you're in a car, please do the same thing. The text message or the phone call can wait. If it can't, pull over, please. We weren't speeding. This truck driver clearly saw us when you look at the video zoomed in. He looked right at us and decided to pull out. Uh, there was nowhere for the other rider to go. Um, I'm still kind of messed up about it. Um, anyway, please just pay attention to where you're going. Pay attention to what you're doing. And same thing, riders on bikes. I don't care if you're on a Harley, scooter, moped, it doesn't matter. Pay attention to your surroundings as well. Everybody look out for everybody. This should have never happened. So please be respectful in the comments. I appreciate it and just bring awareness. Things like this should never happen if everybody just look out for everybody. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. I just wanna Clip. get I'm right towards the, the crash portion. Um, this is this is the this is the reality. I mean, whenever you see in your local news or on your Facebook groups, hey, check your check your check your riders, check your friends. There was an accident here on Silver Bell and whatever. I see all the ones in in Phoenix, and this is this is what it looks like during the incident. You typically just see the picture of the bike demolished, and then like a bunch of cops and firefighters. That's typically what you see. But this is what really happens. So. For Anthony, you know, if he was in a position to be able to rescue, there's not much you can do here anyways. But if they're ever in a position to rescue, this is kind of what you see. You roll up. You're one of the first ones. What do you do? Do you help out? Uh, use as much knowledge as you possibly can? You know, what can you do? But this is quite literally what could happen. No, I didn't know the guy. Up and say, hey. Uh, I so we're, we're riding behind somebody we just saw at the gas station. We just kind of want to catch up to him at the next light and say, hey, what's up, man? So think of the mentality that Anthony's in right now that he's like, hey, I want to say hi to another rider and then witness this. And this is something I want you guys to understand. It might be scary and, and, and I don't want to turn anybody off of riding, but if you're ever in a position where it's like, you know what, it's not worth it to me because I have kids, I have this, I have that, and they're, everyone's dependent on me, it's okay to, to not ride. It's absolutely okay. You're doing a risk assessment yourself. You're thinking to yourself, you know what? It's not good enough. You know, the, the riding experience when it comes to this management of risk that I have. And that's perfectly fine. What you can do is increase your skill. You can get more knowledgeable. And then maybe it might not be so risky to you, but it's up to you if you want to ride or not. But think about it right here. We're getting closer. We're riding up with, with some random person we met. And all of a sudden, this big old side of the vehicle pops up. Okay, he's, he's already fishtailing it. This is the position where we're trying our best to even slow down and stop. I don't know if we're going too fast for the area. I don't know any of that stuff. The thing is, this is what happens. So it's very, very important to be situationally aware. We're supposed to be maintaining our fundamental skills. Wearing full gear, I'm going to tell you right now, going under the tires of an SUV or a, of a semi, your gear is not going to protect you. Uh, rescue another rider. If Anthony had any type of training, he would have at least understood. There's not much we can do, but let's make him comfortable. And right now, though, Anthony's teaching and mentoring us. Okay, he's, he's, he's up here on the podium, guest spot, and he's letting us all know this is the reality of things. And this is the type of stuff I saw all the time. And I want you guys to see it, too. I saw this stuff all the time. And, and I don't want you guys to deal with that. This is going to be an age-restricted video now. That's fine. Motherfucker! So right there, that's the moment of, I just was in an accident, now let me get my bearings back. I'm trying to get what, what happened, what happened, what happened. And when you finally start to look at your scene and you start to see, oh, shit. What do I do? This dude's under the... 
Hey, bro. So take a look. Big old tires on his leg. How do you think his head got there? Got ran over by this tire right here. Internal trauma. Nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing you can do. So I want you guys to understand the limitations of being a smart rider too. Okay, you're going to be as situationally aware as you possibly can. You're going to maintain as many skills as you possibly can. You're going to wear as much gear as you can afford. You're going to get as much rescue training as you possibly can. You're going to try your best to teach a mentor. But this is the, the reality of riding a vehicle on the road or driving a vehicle on the road. You possibly can die. And that's our goal is to prevent as many of these types of incidents for ourselves. So we're going we're gonna to reduce as much of this risk by taking some training, by being focused and situationally aware, wearing gear, literally training like your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. This is why I do this. I want you guys to pay attention to this. I want to scare you into safety. It's very serious. Don't get yourself in this situation. Try not to. And if your friend got into this, let's say it was just a normal car and he's, he's not in this situation, but he just got hurt, how do you protect them? How do you save them? And at the end of the day, you need to understand that you might have friends or people you know that are here. How are you going to deal with it? So when I talk about keeping you guys alive and keeping you guys safe. I also worry about your mental health. I don't just care about your physical. You're, you guys are the complete package. If you guys need to talk, you guys need to share some things that you might have lost a friend, or if you're in a down spot and your ego now, that you ride and your ego takes over because you're so low that you're going to haul ass because you need to finally feel something. You need to discuss something. You need to go to the Discord. You need to go seek uh, counseling or talk to a close friend. The Discord, we have a mental health section, so you can talk about this and hopefully remove some of that risk. Okay, guys, I don't want to see any of my friends. I don't want to see any of you guys in this situation. I know it's a bad image. Let's go ahead and get out of that. I don't want you guys ever to be there. I really don't want you guys to be there. I'm trying to keep your physical body healthy and safe through the Smart Rider principles, but here's the thing. Let's go ahead and work on everything else, okay? All right. So we might have to just go. Uh, let's get out of this. I think we might have to just go to the, the class for a little bit. Um, I forgot this kind of ended on that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more. Let's go ahead and go to the office real quick. There we go. Let's go ahead and go in the office. There we go. I like this chair better. Oh, yeah. We're going to go over some motorcycle helmets real quick, but I want to answer some questions. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I want you guys to be as careful as you possibly can. Uh, would I ever do a reaction of the Isle of Man TT? Those guys are professionals. Um, at that point, all you're really looking at is if they crash, because I, I wouldn't be able to critique any of their skills because they're way above me. Uh, I can only critique uh, any type of, or not critique, I can only do like an assessment of, of injuries. Um, yeah, it was tough, Finley, but I'm good. I'm good. I had to move on. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I gave blood a little earlier. Yeah, I'm a little... <laughs> I love giving blood. I do it every as soon as I can. Uh, I'm going to actually get it, schedule another appointment. Well, talking about how much I hate Ruruck. No, I don't I don't hate them. I I think I think they might have missed the mark on a on a on something, but I don't think I hate them. I don't hate them, guys. How long did it take me to get rid of that nervousness of riding? Um whenever I feel like I'm getting nervous, uh, Jordan, it's because I feel like my skills are not there yet. So if I'm on the road and all of a sudden I'm getting nervous, it's like, well, why am I getting nervous? Am I having a tough time seeking out any hazards? Um, how's my braking? Like, did I feel nervous after trying to break out a light? Some of those things, it's like, okay, those are fixable issues. If you ever get nervous about something, it's more than likely that you're just getting 
uh, you're starting to really get that gut feeling of, uh oh, my skill's not there. So if you're nervous right now, figure out what it is that you're nervous about. So if it's like every time you break, you're nervous. Well, you need to practice your braking. Uh, if you're out riding in traffic and there's a ton of traffic, all of a sudden you're nervous, then you need to realize, okay, my situational awareness is not there yet. I can't pick out all the hazards. I feel like I'm missing hazards. So I need to practice more on lower traffic to where it's like second nature and autom- uh, it's called automacity. So you're going to get to a point where your training turns automatic to where now you can focus more brain power on new things. So once your situation awareness and you can maybe pick out, let's say, five things and you're good at five things and all of a sudden it becomes automatic to where you're not even thinking about those five things, but your brain already picks it up. Now you can work on getting two more things, three more things, four more things. Before you know it, your your brain is able to handle like 30 different things at once to where you can actually relax on a ride because there's no other hazards you have to watch out for other than crazy hazards. And that's where I'm at right now with a lot of the automaticities. I feel like my training's good. I feel like my situational awareness is good, and I can add more skills to my tool belt, um, more tools to my tool belt, more skills. So the reason why you're probably nervous is because, and you have anxiety, is because you don't have the skill set yet. And it's your gut telling you, hey, we don't like this. We need more skills. Uh, so I would be looking into that. Blake from St. Louis here. Hey, Blake, thank you so much for the $5 donation. How long till you get the ZZ Top beard status? I don't know. Keep trimming it. If I didn't trim it, it'd be down here. It just gets so crazy. It gets so crazy. All right, guys, we're going to go over some more helmets. We're going to get back into the office. So don't worry. I know it's comfortable. It's comfortable. I'll go ahead and pull down a screen real quick. Let's go ahead and pull down the screen. Matt, can you do it? There we go. All right, so we got this back right here. Now, what I want to bring up is this right here. So let's get out of that. Let's go ahead and maximize this. So this right here is another helmet that you can get right now that is under $250, okay? We're talking about four helmets that you can get for under $250, and this is one of them, okay? So this is the Bell, or not, sorry, this is the Biltwell Gringo uh, S-E-C-E helmet. Now, I picked this one because I do like the retro look. I absolutely like the retro look. It is not something that I would personally get unless it was more like, you know, fitting an image that I'm trying to get. Um, but the belt built little gringo is actually really safe. I think Ryan from Fortnite did a video on it. And since it's shaped in a circle, it's really, really good when it comes to crash testing. Plus I like the fact that they have a ton of different colors, beautiful colors. I love these colors. So here's the thing. What do I look for? Remember, I look for what the rating is. I look for if it has some form of pin lock or anti fog. And then what is the cost of a replacement visor? That's really important. And another thing that I kind of look for, but I already know, is what is my head shape. So let's go with that real quick. Hey, round oval. It's a little different than intermediate oval. So remember, what is all this about? So we have the round helmet shape, intermediate helmet shape, and long oval, okay? So this is the least common head shape, which is weird. They made the helmet for the least common head shape, but you might have a round head. So make sure you have a helmet that fits that. I'm an intermediate oval, and that's more of the, the most common shape. And once again, it's, it's a little bit, it says right here, slightly thinner, and then it's a little bit long. Uh, long oval, you have like a cone head, pretty much. Um, so what it's talking about right here is you feel hot spots. So what a hot spot is that pressure, okay? So we talked about that a little bit earlier, but the pressure. So if you have a round helmet head and you get an intermediate helmet to buy, you're going to feel pressure on the sides. So if you have an intermediate head shape like me, and you get this helmet, the round head round helmet shape, you're going to feel hot spots and pressure on the front and the back. And that's going to cause headaches and it's not fitting you well. And it's going to give you a headache literally within like the first five minutes when you're riding, you don't want a headache. All right. So I look for that. Now, what's the rating? Boom. I just scroll past all this crap. You know, I, I understand there's a lot of marketing. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, DOT ECE. There we go. DOT ECE rated. Okay. So once again, I don't, I think, uh, Alexa, what time is it? Hopefully I messed you guys up. My uh, phone went off. Um, anytime I look for a helmet, I look for this, and I don't trust only DOT. I don't trust only DOT. I want to make sure it's at least ECE. Boom, it is. Good. Okay, now I can start looking into the other aspects that I like. Okay, so the rating, ECE, cool. Now, what is uh, the shield? Is it pin lock ready? Is it anti-fog, any of that stuff? Well, let's go ahead and find out. What does it say in here? Injection molded, 
Uh, polystyrene, okay. Two shells, okay. Inner biofoam chin pad with, okay. D ring, okay. That's the latch. Injection molded, okay. Rubber chrome speaker pockets. That's cool. You know, speaker pockets. Um, I prefer to use uh, headphones. So right here, it doesn't show anything that it is going to be like a pin lock or anti fog. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, so I need to get an anti fog spray and, and keep up with it when I'm riding. So that could be a detriment to you if you ride in cold weather and you get a little warm in there, you get a little steamy in there. So that's important to understand. So the next thing I look for is the cost of replacement visors. Now, if I scroll down here, this is what I really like about Revzilla, which by the way, we have these links in the description for it, is that, boom, look at, oh, Gen 2 anti-fog face shield. Okay, so the cost of uh, a new shield is roughly 40 to 50 bucks. And then you also have the bubble face shield for a lot of these retro things and it's about 40 50 bucks i'm gonna tell you right now the bubble is is okay i don't like the bubble it seems to catch a lot of wind when i turn my head i used to have it on my uh bell bullet and it was okay I, I like the the straight look so if we click this let's take a look at this let's see what it does okay cool so we have to add this to the cost so anybody know what the back button is on keyboard so i don't have to do that for google chrome all right, so 220 bucks, 220 bucks. Here you go, anti-fog, pretty cool. So 220 plus 50, so $270 if you want to get yourself another shield. And I like to have two shields. I like to have a clear and then a smoked, like a dark smoke. That way it, uh, I have one for daytime and nighttime. Now you can have the photochromatic where it changes. It's up to you. Those are usually more expensive. Um, what I would get here is the chrome mirror. I like chrome. I like the chrome mirror. I like to have it reflective. And anything outside of clear and yellow is going to be mainly for nighttime. So clear, yellow is night. And then you got smoke, chrome mirror, gold mirror, rainbow mirror. That's usually for daytime. Okay, so be very careful about that backspace. Let's see. Nope. Didn't work. Um, so that's what I look for. So $270 if you want to get all of that. But that's what I look for when it comes to a helmet. So the Beltwell Gringo is a pretty good one. It's also staff pick. Links are in the, in the uh, description. Pretty good helmet. You know, if you have a round oval head, it's ECE rated. The other shields that you can get, you know, right up here. Anti fog, so that's pretty good. That's really important. The replacement visor is about 30, 40 to 50 bucks. So, overall, pretty good. I absolutely like it. If I had to get another helmet and I wanted a retro look, this would be a good one. Definitely be a good one. The, the uh, Bell Bullets are pretty expensive, so the Biltwell Gringo is also pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another helmet that I think is really good. Boom. The Scorpion XO R420. Okay, so it's actually in stock. It's $150. Okay, as soon as I see this, it's like, it's a cool looking helmet. That's what grabbed my attention. Let's take a look at what, you know, it has to offer. What's the rating, pin lock or anti-fog? And then what's the cost of a replacement visor? Okay, so right away, I read the first line. It's Snell approved. Awesome, Snell approved. I like that. But let's go ahead and scroll down and see what it really is. So Snell M2015 approved. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. Extra small to 2XL only. Hmm. So if you have a 3XL, it's not Snell approved. I don't know why. I don't know why. But it, if anything, it's going to be a DOT approved. Okay, intermediate oval. That's my head shape. Awesome. That's my head shape, so it works. Now, what's the next thing I look for? Is it a pin lock ready? And does it have any anti-fog? Now, let's take a quick look at this. Typically, you can see like a little notch right here, and that's, that's going to be pin lock. And I'll show you on another another helmet what that is. So let's take a look at this. So it has a ratchet system. Okay, so it's a different thing. It's not a D-ring like a typical one. So it's a ratchet system. Uh, optically clear, interesting. Of course, it should be optically, your eyeballs clear. Anti-scratch hardened, okay. State-of-the-art fog-free technology. I don't trust that all the time. So even if it says fog-free, I make sure I have a fog anti-fog spray of some sort. The only one that I can truly 100% believe in is going to be that pin lock system. The pin lock system works 100% of the time if it's installed right. Uh, the anti-fog can still fog a little bit. One thing that can help out is if you have a nose guard, 
uh, inside the helmet. So it's really important to see if they have that too. So quick fit uh, cheek pads allow easy on and off with some with common styles of eyeglasses. So once again, if you have that where you have eyeglasses, you need to pay attention to that. So, so far this helmet looks pretty good to me. Um, remember, this is what I just look for when I go for, for buying a helmet. If you want me to talk about gloves, pants, jackets, and boots, write it in the comments. I'm actually looking for new boots, so it's really important. So tabs located on the neck roll for easy removal of cheek pads by trained emergency personnel. So that's going to be... Don't have it on the, the Bell SRT, but that's going to be that little red tab that they can pull and it moves the, the cheek pads. Um, here, the thing is a lot of emergency medical personnel aren't trained in it. So it says by trained. So a lot of emergency medical personnel that don't ride motorcycles don't really know that. I knew that my captain at the time didn't know it. A lot of my fellow firefighters didn't know what those red straps were or straps were. I knew what they were because I was a motorcyclist. So it's very important for EMS people to be trained in that, but you can also let them know if you're conscious and in a crash like that. Hey, just pull the little red tab and it'll pull it off. Uh, aero tuned ventilation system, large top vent, and mouth vents. Uh, so that's important for anti fog. You get some good airflow also summertime. So think about that. And here's another thing. So helmet ships with clear face shield only. We're going to talk about the face shields pretty soon. So this is good for day and night. Uh, you can just wear sunglasses if you don't want to buy another visor, but I like having uh, a visor that is smoked. So face shield lock system, secure locks, face shield in place. So very important for that too. But I'm not too concerned about that. Usually they should. Speaker pockets, whatever. Not a big deal. So the Scorpion XO R420 helmet looks pretty cool. I, I always like to get white. So I'm glad they have a white helmet. Look how clean that looks. I really like that. $149.95. Very good. So if I had to get, and it's snow rated. So if I had to get a face shield, it's another 45 to 60. So it's going to be 200 to, you know, 200 and 220, you know, tax and shipping, all that depends. So still kind of under 250. So that's pretty good. So if it ships with only a clear visor, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, what do I want as the other visor? Now there's smoke, there's uh, silver mirror, blue mirror, interesting. Gold mirror is really cool. Ruby mirror, it's out of stock. Oh man. I like silver and I like gold. So if it comes with a clear visor, I mean, that means I'm good for nighttime. Great. Awesome. So that means I want to get something for daytime. Boom. I got this. So 60 bucks though. Jeez. What's the, okay. So there you go. If I want to save a little money, I just get a smoke. It's up to you guys. I think gold and, uh, I think gold and white look really cool. So if you got a white helmet with a gold visor, I think that'd be really cool. So about $220 if you want to get an extra visor too, or just 150 if you just want to get this right here and call it a day. So overall, I think that's really good. And one thing I want you guys to understand is that if you are riding around with this gold visor during the day and all of a sudden it catches nighttime, always, always, always keep a pair of clear glasses in a pocket or in your saddlebags or something so that you can lift it up at least and then put on those clear glasses if you have to ride home at night. So be very careful with that. So what's going to be, let's go ahead and do this. I need to learn the... I need to learn all that stuff. Remember, all these things are in, let's go ahead and do this, are in the description. So if you need the links to any of these are in the description and the first comment of this live stream. Okay. And I'll get to your guys' questions during the Q&A. So if you have any questions about motorcycle helmets, please let me know. We'll go ahead and talk about that. So this right here, I picked this one because remember, this is like what you can get right now. Let's go ahead and get out of this. This is what you can get right now. So this is a good deal. You're going to save 100 bucks. It's usually $279.95 for this. Now, wh how much does it typically cost for a Bell Qualifier Deluxe MIPS? Look at that right there, $279.95. So if you're okay with this colorway, which I think it's pretty cool. I like the silver and the, and the, the black and everything, how it's just kind of fading across. For, for $99 off, I'd get that instead of just a pure white or pure black. And there's also the green. There's also the blue. So it looks pretty dang cool. So if, you're, if you like this helmet, cool. You can get $100 off right now. Let's see. And they have full sizes, all the sizes right now. Okay, so cool. I'm out looking for a helmet. What is it that I'm looking for with this helmet? I think it looks cool. It grabbed my attention. Now what do I do? Okay, so I'm going to go down. Intermediate oval. Boom. It fits my head shape. I am golden there. Cool. I'm going to skip all this marketing. I don't need to read all that. I don't care. 
I'm going to go down to here. Boom, DOT and ECE certified. So ECE, love it, love it, love it, love it. Now I'm going to go down through all the features, okay? So MIPS, multi-directional impact protection system for dramatically improved rotational impact energy displacement. Whew. So basically what that is, it has its own suspension system inside. So it does this when you hit the ground. So if you hit the ground, it'll rotate instead of your brain rotating. So that's going to help out a little bit. There, It came from the BMX and mountain biking um, world. And now it's being translated and tested in motorcycling. I don't see it as a negative. I see it as a net positive. So with the net positive, that's cool. Okay. All I care about right now is that it's ECE certified. As soon as uh, some studies really come out for motorcycling, I'm not too, I don't, I don't care too much right now, to be honest. Uh, I care about the ECE. So $179.99 for an ECE helmet, boom, already. And it comes from Bell. Good stuff. And the qual qualifier is a good helmet too. All right, so three shell sizes. So what that tells me, if I get an extra small and small helmet, it's going to have the smallest shell. If I get a large or a medium and large, it's going to be the medium shell and so on. So that tells me I'm not going to have a bobblehead if I'm a small helmet shape. And they're not just using the large helmet shell which is big cheek pads. So, it's, so to me, this tells me that they're having the small shell for the small helmets, medium shell, the medium helmets, and so forth. So I'm not going to have the biggest bobblehead. So that's pretty cool. So pro tint cr photochromatic shield included. That's usually, that's usually like a hundred something dollars. Let's, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look. Well, of course, it's not going to say included. Okay, so let's see. Qualifier, photochromatic shield. Ah, they won't sell it straight up from there. But those are usually very, very expensive. So what is a photochromatic shield? So that's going to change in, in sunlight. It's going to get dark. At nighttime, it's going to uh, go clear. So you don't even have to have a second shield. And that's what I was looking at is the cost of replacement shields. So that's really good. That's a great price. That's a, it's insanely high value. So this right here, guys, it's a weekly deal, $179.99. It's linked in the description. They have every single listing. Let's see, do they have that one? Yep, they have that one. Wait, let's click that. Ah, oh, okay. So if you want the really good looking one, you better have a small, extra small to medium head. But if you guys like green, let's see. Okay, so they, they pretty much have some good blues. That's a good color. I like that. And they have all of that. Huge, huge value on this one. This is probably the best one you can probably get right now. All right, so let's see. So you don't have to worry about a shield. Now, Nutrafog, Superior Anti-Fog, Anti-Scratch, UV Protected Shield. Okay, so you might still have to get an anti-fog spray, which is not a big deal. Chin Curtain and Breath Deflector, that's going to help with the, uh, the fogging. Contour Cheek Pads, that could be comfortable. Removable, washable interior, very, very important. That way you can remove it because if you get acne like me or if you're a woman that has makeup, um, if you constantly keep wearing the, the face shield, or not face shield, the, the cheek pads and everything, you're getting makeup all over it, you get oils in there, so then you put it on your face again, you start getting acne, you start having to deal with that, it gets gross and then it starts stinking. So having it removable and washable is very cool. You can remove it and just wash it by hand with a little bit mild detergent, soap, warm water, call it a day. That's really good. Uh, padded wind collar. Very good. Adjustable ventilation system. Okay. How adjustable is it? Integrated speaker pockets. That's good. Like I said, I like to have little headphones in there connected to my Cardo Pack Talk. Uh, padded chin strap, a D ring. Pretty typical. Five year warranty. Okay. So no longer include communicator compartment as shown in images. So that's typically like a little spot on the side of the helmet that, let's see, like right here where it says the bell. Typically, there's like a little section where like a, a Cena or a Cardo can fit. But guys, $179.99, this is probably the best deal you're going to get this week. It's a weekly deal, so it's not going to be like that all the time. Check it out, check it out. Cali Muscle, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? I had some, uh, I had some Top Ramen today after my workout. <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen that in so long. It's really fun. How you doing? Man? Hopefully, you're doing well on your, uh, on your, uh, your new Harley having a good time, getting that friction zone, getting that stuff down, getting that stuff down. Hope you do. But this is right here is, uh, is one of the helmets, the four helmets that are under $250 you can get right now. 
It's a greatly rated. This is probably the best one. It's probably the best one. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and go into Q&A real quick. Let me know what you guys have any questions about uh, any of the motorcycle helmets, any of the things that you are looking for. Uh, are you looking for gear? Do you want me to go over that? I actually just got this too, you know, the stop the bleed, you know, what everyone should know about stop bleeding after an injury. We're going to talk about that stuff uh, pretty soon. You know, we're working on those things. Cali Muscle with the 1999. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, Cali, if you want, I'll go to freaking California. I, I live in Tucson, so it's not that far. And we can have a little training day or something. We can make something happen. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Maybe get you all situated, answer any of your questions in person. Uh, pin throttle. I have an HJC CL17. You mentioned a, a Snell for track and a large one for normal riding. I can't recommend the CL17 enough. A great helmet for the cost. Stock visor comes with pin lock too. Oh, there you go. So the only reason why I didn't recommend the CL17 earlier is because it was out of stock. Um, but it is a great helmet. It is an amazing helmet. Super cheap in terms of inexpensive. And then at the same time, you're going to get a lot of value out of it. It's pin lock. You know, I think it was like 150 bucks pin locked, uh, Snell rated. You know, you, you, I don't think you can get better than that. It does. I believe it's a round oval head shape. So if you have an intermediate oval head shape, it might be a problem for you. Might be a problem. Yeah, Callie, if you let me know, email me, send me, uh, I have my email at the bottom of the, de the, the description. Uh, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Or send me a message on Twitter. Uh, can you do gloves neck, please? Yeah, Richard definitely would. Um, the reason why I started, do I'm doing these now, the 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 five helmets, four motorcycle helmets, whatever it is, under 250 bucks, is because I literally looked down at my boots earlier and I saw like a tear in the in the lining. I was like, man, how old are these boots? And I realized, oh crap, it's been at least five years since I got those boots. So I'm going to probably get new boots, but I'm going to do the same thing. I go to RevZilla, I look at the information they provide, and I just go based off of these things. What's the rating for the helmets? You know, does it have a pin lock or anti-fog? And what's the cost for the replacement visors? Because I always want to have a dark and then clear visor. And then also, I, I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't put it in there. First and foremost, what kind of helmet is it? What helmet shape? So helmet, helmet shape. I want to know what the helmet shape, because if it's not the right helmet shape for me, it's going to hurt, and I'm not going to want to wear it. Awesome, Callie. Let's do it. Let's do it. 2021. 2021. Let's get you situated. We'll do some slow speed parking lot practice. We'll get you ready. Maybe teach you a little bit about uh, trauma training. You probably know a lot about that stuff. Um, I got, got my bag right here, a little bit of trauma training. That way we can keep you safe on California roads. Crazy out there. Crazy roads out there. I want you to be able to swerve if you have to, brake if you have to. All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, look at some of these things. Uh, know anything about the Givy Exo Explorer helmet? No, I do not. Let's take a look and see if we can find it. Oh, it's not on Revzilla. It must. Where is it at, Prodigal? Is that a European helmet? Oh, no, no, it's on Revzilla. What the heck am I? Take a look. Cycle, cycle world. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, guys. All right, so this is what you're talking about. It's a modular helmet, right? Yeah, so this right here, this chin bar, uh, it's, it's, for, it's mainly for looks. I don't, I don't think it is protection. Uh, detachable chin guard. I don't think it is, yeah, see, DOT only because cause it's not, it doesn't, it can't be tested on that. Um, I'm surprised it doesn't mention anything about protection. It, it, it's not going to protect you like a typical full face. So what this is is basically a half, or I'm sorry, a three-quarter helmet. Uh, without the chin protection, even if you have the chin protection on. It's just going to be a deflection for wind, rain, and a few other things. It's not going to protect you in on the face. I do like the drop-down visor. I think all helmets should start doing that. I like to have the, the visor up here. I use mine from the Shoei Hornet to be able to, to block some of the sun. Yeah, just be very careful with that. Be very careful with that.
All right, let's see if I can catch up. Go ahead and start writing your comments again or write your, uh, it's rated as an open face. There you go. Yeah, so don't, don't assume that it's going to help you out uh, in terms of a crash for that chin bar. Now, if you want to have a full face, but then also have the, the comfort of a three-quarter, get yourself a modular helmet that is ECE rated. Because it will be, it's only time it's ECE rated is that if that chin bar can be used as protection. So a lot of motorcycle helmets that are modular can be ECE rated, but Snell doesn't rate modular helmets because they, they don't trust the, the clasp. They don't trust that. Uh, Augustine let Dan, I broke my back in a motorcycle accident last week. How are you doing? Like how bad of a break? Are we talking spinal cord or are we talking about, uh, your step offs, the, the vertebral vertebral, vertebral, the vertebrae step offs, the little, little, little things that are on the, on the outside. How bad? What made you get into motorcycles? I see you talk a lot about them, but not how you started. 70, 732 located. I talk about it all the time. Um, maybe you just, haven't noticed it, but I'll go ahead and mention it right here. Uh, what got me into it was Matt, my best bud, my brother, Matt. And uh, I was going through a divorce at the time and I couldn't afford a truck, which is what I wanted. So I just said, screw it. I'm going to buy myself a Harley Sportster like he had. We went on road trips, had a great time, pulled me out of my depression at the time. So that's kind of how I started. And then I realized a lot of people started having uh, issues uh, with the crashes. So uh, I wanted to make sure everybody was being safe with that. So that's kind of where I did or where I started with that. Do you know anything about the Sedici Strata 2 solid helmet? I'm going to tell you right now. Sedici, I think that's how you say it. They're a good brand. Like you can't go wrong with them. So that's one thing that I want you guys to look out for is that if you go with a brand like Bell, Shoei, Arai, Sedici, AGV, those are reputable brands, and I'm sure there's more. Uh, Biltwell's is getting pretty damn reputable, if not already. And Simpson came from the drag racing world so they're very good with that but uh, i don't like the the looks of them too much they're they're really good for for racing because you're not having to move your head a lot that chin bar feels like they're going to get a lot of drag when you turn your head um so those brands sadichi you're you're golden I, I don't even have to look at it it's probably an amazing helmet uh they don't they don't skimp on protection and they don't skip on materials that's another thing we should do more charity streams. I always enjoy support. Major, I want to. I want to. Guys, uh, here's the thing. Save your charity money. Save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. Because the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is now going to be in May. So not September. So I'm going to participate in the May ride. The May ride. Sounds like hay ride. I'm going to be participating in the May Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. And we got top 50. We got top 50. And let's see if we can get top 10 this year. You know, we're slowly creeping up more and more and more. We, we got top 50 two years in a row. Let's see if we can get top 10. If we get top three, I'm going to tell you right now, if we get one of those motorcycles, if we get number one, I'm either going to give away that motorcycle or my FTR. I'm telling you that right now because I want to see what kind of bike is in. I might, might want to keep the one that we won, but I'm definitely going to give away something or I'm going to give out a bunch of cash um, because you guys made it possible. Uh, do you have any points on the Quinn Design Nero? Uh, no, I. So Finlay, that's a great question. So Quinn Design, they are they're kind of new, and they're kind of cool. I like it. So Quinn Design helmets are really interesting. Okay, so they they're kind of getting everybody out there. You, you see how expensive they are? It's like, well, damn, why are they so expensive? Well, there it is. Tradition meets technology. The Arc chip. So Bluetooth 4.0. And okay, well, what does that mean? So I, I was actually looking into it and they have like a crash detection. They have integrated, um, there we go, integrated Bluetooth. They have all these different things. So let's go and take a look at, let's just do the features. So the safety, so uh, it, it, it triggers an SOS beacon if you crash. So that's really cool. And it will contact your emergency contacts. Um, it will give out the positioning of where you're at. And it comes with the app. Okay, so that's really cool. So what's the safety aspect of it? So it looks like they started off in there. So crash detection, SOS, crash detection. There's the app. Okay, it's just all there, SOS. Okay, cool. What's the other thing? Q details. Let's see. So the finish, quick release. It looks like it's very comfortable padding. Got good ventilation. The interior looks really beautiful. Internal sun visor. Love that. 
but only comes with certain helmets and then has a lot of tech integration. Now, my thing is, is that I have uh, Cardo Pack Talk bolts and, and I really like the Cardo Pack Talk. So I'd have to really check out uh, how that works with uh, other Cardos. Name some bad brands. Um, nah, I'm not going to name some bad brands. I'm not going to name bad brands. I'm going to I'm gonna name the ones that you should focus on. AGV is a good, is a good helmet. So the AGV K3 SV is a good helmet under 20 buck, 200 bucks. Hokage, good. Very good. AGV is really good helmets. Really good helmets. <laughs> your serene white mode rides. Well, I don't want you having those. Now I hear your voice in my head saying side of the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Zachary Cobra. I, I can't believe I missed that. Hey, Dan, I, with the $20 donation. I haven't been able to get my endorsement or bike due to my primary vehicle going out. Watching your videos has helped me keep my spirits up while being able to learn. Thank you for helping other riders new and seasoned. Hey, thank you so much for the $20 donation. Hopefully you're, you're doing well. The primary vehicle went out, man. That's, that's kind of a no buenos. No buenos. 250 bucks is still a great helmet, guys. And here's the thing. So let's, let's talk real quick about you know the pricing and everything. You don't need a $400, $500, $600, $800, $1,000 helmet. You really don't. This is why I wanted to bring up uh, motorcycle helmets that are under $250 that you can get right now because that's all you need. As long as it has a decent ventilation system, it's comfortable, it's safe, so it has a good rating, it has anti-fog so you can see if it starts fogging up because it's getting cold out, your hot, your hot breath is fogging things up. Make sure it has the pin lock or an anti-fog thing. You know, and as long as it fits your head, because you might be looking at like AGVs or, or some Arise. Let's, let's talk about Arise. You're like, man, I want to get the Arise. And you go get it. You don't even think about it. You just got it because your friends or somebody recommended it. And it's a round oval head. But you have an intermediate oval head. And you already started riding with it a couple times. You can't, turn, you can't return it at that point. So you just spent 500 bucks on an Arai helmet or more, and you can't do anything with it. So I want you guys to not get in that position. I want you guys to get a helmet that fits you, that you love, especially if you're a beginner. Just get it going because you don't want to spend all your money on a helmet and you don't have money for gloves, pants, jackets, or boots. That'd be a no bueno situation. So get yourself something within your budget. And I'm trying to help you out with that. And we're going to talk more about that uh, in the next class. We're going to talk about gloves. We're going to talk about boots. We're going to talk about all those other things. And let me know. Let me know. Let me know what you guys want to know. You know? <laughs> How's everyone? I'm glad to be seeing the live video on my computer doing good this time. Jamie, how you doing? How you doing? Any suggestions for pants for big people? I can't find more than 45-inch waist. Need a 56. Right now, I wear chaps, but would like the hip and rear protection. So, Ken, look into overpants. Look into overpants. Let's see if I can find. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the one I have. Reacts. Alta mesh pants. Let's go ahead and get to it real quick. Let's see if it can fit you. Okay, what is a 3X? Oh, you're right, man. The waist. You have a 56 inch waist. That might be tough. Whoa, Streamlabs. Jeez. Calm down. Comment day. Uh, you might you might be out of luck, man. You might have to get it tailored. You might have to get something tailored. And the problem is you gotta find a tailor that can do Kevlar. Hey, there there comes a time, man, where where you have to look into your own limitations on that. And it's like you might have to lose a little bit to to fit into like a 3X. Uh an overpant, what that is. So I'm going to show you this. These are my pants that I wear. So this is going to be one of those under $200, $300 uh, videos. These are the pants I wear. Absolutely love them. Uh, the 3X is out of stock, and the 3X right here is only a 40 to 42 waist. Um, but the thing is, they're pretty big, even for that. So it has six inches of adjustability, so you might be in luck. So six, so I think the max would be 50, 48 then at that point. So three, that's what I like about overpants is they're very, very, very adjustable. Very adjustable. Um, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. I don't, I, I don't, 
if you're having trouble finding them, I don't think I can. Uh, think about getting modular helmet. Scarlet suggested it because of my anxiety. Would you agree? Yeah, great question, area code. Um, and the thing is, okay, so guys, with modular helmets and claustrophobia and anxiety, uh, if if you're like me, when I get really pissed off or, and anxious, I don't like having anything right here. I don't like that. So you have a face shield, a full uh, full face helmet, and you start getting anxious while you're riding. You could either pull over, take off your helmet, and try to breathe, or you can pull over, flip it up, and then breathe a little bit. Maybe go start going for a ride a little bit slow speed. You don't want to have it uh, up when you're riding high speeds. Um, or at the next light, you can pop it up, put it back down. So that can help you breathe, get a little bit of anxiety. But the thing is, if you're getting a lot of that anxiety and you know, you're riding, we need to figure out what the problem is. We really do. We need to start working on some of the tools and some cognitive behavioral therapy to get that anxiety under, under control because that can mess you up. And a helmet is a Band-Aid at that point. Uh, a modular helmet is a Band-Aid. I like modular helmets so I can breathe or I can take it up and you know, drink some water uh, so I don't have to take it off inside you know, a store. Uh, but pull it up, and then I can talk to you guys if I'm out teaching, things like that. I have a DOT approved, and I understand what this is not ideal. However, I generally only ride on ATV under three. Yeah, so DOT is fine. DOT is fine. The testing for DOT is really good. My issue with DOT is that it's post-market testing. So uh, NHTSA will pull some helmets off the shelf and test them, and if they don't pass, the, the manufacturer gets fined. But from what I read... I think like in 2019, they tested 10 different kinds of helmets on the market. So it's just underfunded. You know, it's just kind of crazy. So ECE is where it's at. So uh, Mr. Cheshire, Snell, ECE, DOT, you know, Snell the best, ECE and DOT. I believe ECE and Snell are the same. They're definitely better than ECE. And then FIM, uh, something in modulation, uh, in modulation or something like that, it's... It's the new MotoGP standard. I think that's better than EC and Snell. So I got I to gotta ask a little bit more about that. Um, DOT is fine. Um, I've, I got my kids DOT helmets for when they ride the little EFTRs. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. I just, if I'm going to spend money on something that, that I know I'm going to have for the next four or five years, I'm going to make sure it's at least ECE. That's all it is. Blake, with the 5, I have a Torque T14. Any thoughts on it as an awesome helmet? It sounds like you have a, a hand tool for a helmet. <laughs> uh, torch helmets. So I'm looking at it. Beautiful looking helmet, man. These are actually really beautiful looking helmets. I'm going to... These are good looking helmets, man. Which one do you have? Look at that helmet. I like the styling. I need to tell Matt about it because he likes the styling too. He likes this kind. And they got, it's almost like a bell bullet. Which one do you have? Dude, that's like a straight up bell bullet. Which one do you have? I can't find your comment anymore. Just had your first MRI and if oh dude I had an MRI on my knee uh, during the fire academy because I tore my uh, I tore both ACLs during the academy I still passed know what I'm saying know what I'm saying pushed through the pain <laughs> very unstable or unstable legs at that point though imagine doing hundreds of stairs with torn ACLs yeah um yeah they got, they gave me a little bit of claustrophobia I do look amazing Nikki yeah yeah yeah. By the way, we're having another date on Thursday. Oh, does that mean I got to get going pretty soon? Oh, it's almost 5 o'clock. We've been streaming for two hours. I usually only do one hour. I'm having too much fun with you guys. Which helmet do you got? Uh, I saw that somebody was mentioning a Torque. This is a great-looking helmet. So, so here's the thing. So I look up. I'm, I'm like, oh, man, this is a good-looking helmet. It's like, I want that thing. But I have to make sure it fits my head. I have to make sure it's safe. Uh, T14, Lucky 13 on site. You don't have to donate to, to tell me again. <laughs> so T13, I appreciate it, though. I really do. I like the retro. So T, T14. I don't see a T14. I see a T3, T5, T14. Is, it, is the 13 just not, I mean, like they, they upgraded it to the 14 now? I'm going to assume that. 
I'm going to assume that. Just just say yes in the chat. You don't have to donate again. Thank you for the five. I appreciate it. All right, so lucky 13. There you go. Look at that. So this one right here. Dude, 100 bucks. All right, let's see what... Okay, 100 bucks. It's within my budget. It looks badass. Now let's see what it has. Okay, let's see what's... Wow. Whoa. Hundred dollar ECE certified helmet. Drop down sunglasses. What brand is this? In order to be ECE certified, they have to uh, do pre market testing. So before these can even be sold in Europe, they have to go through the ECE testing. Washable, removable. I'm sorry. Now I'm looking at helmets, man. One second. I'm just looking at helmets. Oh, I love this gray. I love this gray. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so beautiful. 239 That's really cheap for a Bell Bullet type helmet. ECE certified. Good. Anti-scratch, anti-fog. Okay, okay, okay. There's not very many ventilations when it comes to this kind of helmet. One second. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at a helmet that I would get. Sorry guys, I'm I'm ignoring you for now. Um T15. Let's take a look at the T15. So which one? These look like LS. Okay, so I wouldn't get this one for me. I'm just gonna point out because of that right there, the facial, because that's where I put my GoPro. So let's get out of that. I have to also think business wise too. So that's the same thing with this one, I would assume. Yep, same thing. Okay, not a big deal. Not a big deal. I can make things work. The retro helmet, I can make work easily. Well, if I was going to do it, I'd get a modular helmet. Let's just do... I like silver so much. Okay, so it's blue, it has Bluetooth. Optional. $150? Are you kidding me? That is cheap. Where are they? F They're in California. So this is, is it, I wonder if it's American made. They're, they have a lot of Chinese certifications. So maybe they're not American made. That's probably why they're so cheap. But everything, guys, everything is, is made in China no matter what. Don't worry about it where it's made. Everything's made in China. Dude, I... Let's go ahead and do this. Let's do... Bookmark bar. This is... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ignoring the chat. These are great helmets. Thank you for letting me know, but look at that thing. <gasps> the Jackson Pollock painting. Look at that. Dude. That's a sick helmet. 229, that's nothing for a helmet like this. Dude. Look, it's got vents right there. I want to know more. I want to know what side, I want to know what kind of helmet. Okay, so it's just telling you how to, sh it doesn't tell you the head shape, so I'm concerned about the head shape. Because usually the retro helmets like this are for round heads, and I wouldn't be able to fit that. But these street helmets, let's let's take a look at. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go back to the one you had. Sorry about that. You got me distracted. And and, and real quick, what I like about this company is that they're like, hey, we're gonna get a helmet for everybody. You got a half shell. That's up to you. We got a three quarter retro half shell. Once again, drop down half shell. So it has a visor on it. Cool, cool, classic. All right, whatever. But then they also have. Uh, full face for everybody. They have retro and new, and then they have a modular. So let's go back. So it's really cool. Really cool. So let's just go to the T15. Let's do, let's just take a look at it. Matte black. 129. Oh my gosh. I wish they were pin lock. 
I really wish they were pin lock. I really do. The pivot kit. Helmet liner kit. Okay, so how much is the how much is another visor? So the okay, so the pivot kit is for okay. So the shields are cheap. That's that's for a clear shield, I bet. Let's see for a chrome shield. Five more dollars. That ain't nothing. They have gloves too. Become an influencer, huh? You start punching people. <laughs> Come an influencer. All right, let's do product manuals. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm ignoring you. T14, so this is what you have. I'm going to have to call them up, and I'm going to ask them if what's what helmet shapes these are for. Yeah, because this doesn't tell you what type of helmet shape it's for. It just tells you how to size it. Hey, man. That's, that's, thank you for, for telling me about them. Holy crap, dude. One sec, I'm, I'm sending a message to Matt. Motos with Matt. As much as I, I love Shoei. I love Shoei. I love my Shoei helmet. Um, I really, really do. But the thing is, if, if they can provide quality helmets for that cheap, I'm serious, guys. If they can provide a quality helmet, ECE certified, I'm going to take a look at the T14 again. ECE certified, matte black. I, I prefer a white, but $100, $99.99 for a full face helmet that is ECE certified. Removable chin, I'm sorry, yeah, removable chin curtain, breath deflector, so that's the nose part. Removable uh, cheek pads and liner, and it has an internal drop down sunglasses for a hundred dollars. I'm gonna contact them and see if they can send me a helmet so I can see what it's all about. That is insane. I don't know what they're they're. Uh, if that's the case and they're still making profit, then what the heck is HJC and showing all them? What kind of profit are they making? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, anyways, guys, I'm sorry. Um, I got to get going, though. I'm going to take my doggo for a WALK, and uh, she's going to have a great time. I Hopefully, you guys had a great time here. Uh, we talked about four motorcycle helmets under $250 you can get right now, and we went over some user-submitted videos. If you guys want to submit your own videos, please do so. Um, oops, I just click the wrong button so ignore that right there we're not i'm gonna probably get rid of that dv from highlights channel don't worry don't worry oh don't say the augustine don't say the walk word out loud she understands that uh go ahead and check out uh that link right there if you want to send me your own uh crashes and close calls please do so i will take a look at them but uh i gotta get going i'm sorry hope you guys have a great time I'll see you guys on the Discord. This right here is the Discord. Ooh, look at it. Right apart came up. Oh, interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take a look. How new is this? Sabrina, she does a good job. Oh, hey, this is brand new. Oh, look at all these. There you go. Check out these. We have that in the crew lounge right here. So if you are a crew member, you get access to the crew lounge. If you want to become a crew member, it's only $1.99 a month. It literally is cheaper than a coffee. And you get access to a bunch of stuff. You get your emojis. You get your mustache and beard like Blake Cook. How you doing, man? Heavy Harris. It, it is su suspiciously cheap. I'm going to contact them and see what uh, what they do. Because I'm not going to I'm not gonna influence. I'm not going to tell you guys to get their helmets until I check them out. C4 
CJ Mita or CG Mita, I, I want to. I'm going to contact them. I'm going to see if they can send me a helmet. 